So here we go. Uh, today we're going to talk about endothermic and exothermic reactions. First, I want to show, I want to um, send this word out to you guys. You should be writing this down in your notes. Thermic, thermic reactions, right? There are two types of reactions. And one is an endothermic and one is an exothermic reaction, which you guys learned a little bit about already. Um, okay, Amaya which you guys, um, we talked about already. Uh, no, you, you learned already about in module eight, endothermic and exothermic reactions. Um, if I type this, whoops, sorry, Amaya, that went to you privately. If I tell you therm, T-H-E-R-M, like a thermometer or a thermal reading, what does that word have to do with? Yes, Jordan, heat, okay? So an endothermic or exothermic reaction has to do with heat. Um, what's the difference between the two? If I take the word endo, if I take endothermic reactions, just endo, if I talk to you guys about skeletons, right? You guys have an endoskeleton, which means that your skeleton is inside your body. You are protected, your skeleton is protected by muscles, ligaments, tendons, tissue, right? So it's an endoskeleton, which means that it's inside. So when I talk about an endothermic reaction, okay, Noah. If I talk about an endothermic reaction, I'm talking about a reaction that takes in heat. So endo endo is taking in heat. If I talk to you guys about an exoskeleton, like that of a roach, a lobster, a crab, right? And you step on it, you're going to hear crunch because an exoskeleton is a skeleton that's on the outside of the body, right? And it protects that organism. Um, another term is exit. Exit means to leave, right? So if I have um, an exothermic exothermic reaction it means giving off heat so an exothermic reaction is going to give off heat and endothermic is going to take in heat That's not it with the notes. We're going to do a little drawing, kind of. What I'd like you to do is write this down on your paper, solid to a liquid to a gas. Right in the center of the paper, somewhere where you're going to be able to write above it and below it because we're gonna add notes around it. Solid to liquid to gas. And here in the United States, we read left to right, yes? So we're gonna look at this from left to right. It's important that you know um, one from the other for this. So um, if I move from left to right, on my chart here from left to right. Now, those are all endothermic reactions and I'll explain why in a minute. But beneath that, I want you to write endothermic reactions going from left to right. 
if going from left to right is endothermic, what's going from right to left? Good. Exothermic reactions are going from right to left. <laughs> so we're going to take our simple um, water, right? H2O. Water is a liquid. Y'all agree with me on that? Yeah. Okay. So if I am going from a liquid to a gas, that means that evaporation is taking place, right? We talked about taking an ice cube, right? Liquid to gas is evaporation. We talked about taking water, putting it in a pot on a stove, adding heat. When I add heat, that liquid is going to become water vapor. It's going to evaporate. So because I'm adding heat to that water, endothermic means I'm taking heat in, going from a liquid to a gas is always an endothermic reaction. If I'm going from a solid to a liquid, let's take that water again. And if it's a solid, we say that it's ice, right? Going from a solid to a liquid is melting. In order for melting to occur, we have to add heat. Therefore, it's endothermic. It's taking heat in for that process to occur. Okay, so now we'll go back up top. For our exothermic reactions. And if we go from a liquid to a solid, that is freezing. So it's giving heat off, right? If I am going from a gas to a liquid, we call that condensation. Remember we said like if you, <laughs> that your parents are absolutely gonna lo love you doing this, go into the car, breathe on all of the car windows, right? Because you have the warm water vapor coming out of your mouth it's going to hit the cold window. It's going to condense and then you can write in it. Do it on all the windows. Your parents are going to love it. Tell them you're just practicing science, right? Tell them it's a science experiment, right? You're doing your science homework. Um, I, yeah, I, most parents do not like it, Natalia, um, because you have to take Windex to clean it off and everything like that. But <clears throat> you can blame it on a science experiment. You can talk to them and say, this is, this is because condensation is taking place because the warm water vapor from my mouth is hitting the cold window, causing it to condense so I'm able to write in it. It's also an exothermic reaction. And then your dad would be like, oh, that's brilliant. You could do it whenever you want, right? Because you're practicing science. And if you could explain what science is, he'll be like, right on, good job, okay. There's one other that I didn't talk about. And we did a little experiment here. I did a little demonstration for you where I took dry ice. Dry ice goes, <laughs> probably still no, Vincent, yeah. Um, 
the dry ice goes from a solid directly into a gas without going through the liquid phase. We call that sublimation, right? So if you can, you should be able to fit it. Sublimation is going from your solid to your gas. directly without uh, directly without um, passing through the liquid phase. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, it, it, it's an, it, well, no, are you trying to, so this is the thing, Sully. Take a soda can and crush that. That's a science experiment, not a car. I would never tell you to go crash your car that would be silly. First of all, it'd be illegal because you're too young to drive. Second of all, that would be silly. Take a soda can or better yet, maybe take a milk carton, um, something that you can squish. It's still a milk carton. It's just a squished milk carton. So that means it went through a physical change, right? You can explain that too. You can talk about this with your parents all the time. Um, Alex, I have no idea the answer to your question. Um, but that's not what we're talking about right now. Um, okay, so any type of reaction that is going from right to left, gas to solid to liquid, would be an exothermic reaction. Any reaction that's going right, uh, left to right would be an endothermic reaction. Endothermic means that it needs to take heat in in order for the reaction to occur. So far, so good. Okay. You guys have that i'm gonna throw out a couple of them to you in the chat take the information that you have written down i don't want to know if it's a physical or chemical change i want to know if it's an endothermic or exothermic reaction be very careful how you answer not how you answer the question what the question reads or what the the process reads for you answering the question. It's not a rush. Take the information that you have there and apply it. I'm gonna start off easy, okay? Um, a campfire burning. Is it taking in heat or giving off heat? And if you just wanna write endo or exo in there, you're fine with that. Let's, let's start with this question. If you had a campfire in front of you right now, would you put your hand in it? No, why? Because you would get burned. Why? Because it's giving off heat. If it is giving off heat, is it endothermic or exothermic? Remember exo, exoskeleton, exit, giving off, right? Burn, getting burned is not fun. Exo, thermic means it's giving off heat. So a campfire is giving off heat. So therefore it's exothermic, correct? Let's try another one. Um, If I'm making ice, that means I'm starting with water, which is a liquid. 
and it's turning into ice, which is a solid. So therefore it is freezing. Look at your chart. Is it endothermic or exothermic? Look at your chart, it's exothermic, you're freezing. Yes, okay, here's another one. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis happens within the plant, right? What does it need? Good, Sully, good, Asfiq. Why, Alex? Think about what's happening, okay? Alex, think about it again. What? Photosynthesis is not condensation. Think about the three things that a plant needs for photosynthesis to occur. Three things that a plant needs for photosynthesis to occur. Yes, Jordan. Okay. Um, Three things that a plant needs for photosynthesis to, photosynthesis to occur. It needs um, water, right? It needs to take in water. It needs to take in carbon dioxide, right? So now we have water and carbon dioxide going into the plant. And it also needs to take in sunlight energy, which is heat, right? So it's taking it in, which means that it is endothermic. It's taking in the heat. We're not talking about the sun. The sun is giving off heat, but I didn't ask about the sun. I asked about the process of photosynthesis, right? So in order for photosynthesis to occur, it has to take in heat energy from the sun. Does that make sense? Here's another one. Um, A cold pack used for an energy and for an injury. I didn't say ice in a pack. I said a cold pack. You guys know what cold packs are, right? When you take a cold pack, you hit it, shake it. Chemical reaction takes place inside, and the pack turns cold. If it's exothermic, that means it's giving off heat. It's a cold pack right? Because it's a cold pack, it is endothermic. Here, this is a difficult one, but think about the process. Formation of snow in the clouds. What is a cloud made up of? What is a cloud made of? Water. Water vapor. And what is snow? Um, frozen water. It's solid, right? So you're going from a vapor to a solid, a gas to a solid. Is that endo or exo? 
Endo. Look at your chart. I have a feeling you guys did not write down this. <laughs> if you're going from gas to a solid, good job, Natalia. It is exothermic. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So you have to look at the chart. There are reasons why I ask you to write things down because they'll help you when we're doing this, right? So if it's going from a gas, a water vapor to a solid, because the clouds are water vapor to a solid, which is snow, it's an exothermic reaction. Okay. Um, it is tough. It's not easy. I didn't say that it was gonna be easy. Um, I'll give you one more easy one to make it better for you, okay? Um, here you go. You're starting with an ice cube and you're melting it. So you're going from a solid to a liquid. You're adding heat. It's taking in heat. Yes, you should have it written down on your chart. <laughs> when it is melting, that is endothermic. Okay. Yes. All right. So let's throw a couple more out there, but we're going to switch gears. We're going to go to physical and chemical changes, physical and chemical changes.